uh, the date it is. Uh, well, I do, but right now, no, I don't. I want to get second into this one today. Self-hexed people, you know. People have had curses rebounding on them. Now, you know, the most obvious thing of this is, now those of you who don't believe in magic and stuff, bear with me, you will find this very interesting. People, you know, peop, the most obvious place you see the self-cursed or the self-hexed is in Wicca. Wicca is full of unstable individuals who put, you know, lemon spells and lemon curses and stuff like that, and use cursing oil on their ex-husbands and stuff like that, and it comes back in spades and they're all fucked up. And they all have disabilities. You go to any Wicca, any Wicca kind of event, you, you, you lose count of the amount of walking sticks, walkers, wheelchairs, and people on their last leg with cancer. Because... The, you know, for all their do no harm thing and threefold law, they 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 they're all mad cursing. They're all mad for cursing their exes and stuff like that. And their neighbors. Now, what is a rebounded curse? Well, let's first of all t talk about the concept in terms of a biological thing. If we don't believe in magic. It, it, let's talk in terms of a, a, some more scientific aspect of it. When you were in school. And you were bullied in school by the school bully. So say you're, you're minding your own business, you're 10 years old and you're sitting in a, in a schoolyard. And the school bully comes over and either punches you in the face or says something like, uh, you, your mother dresses like a slag or a whore. What happens then is you, there's a me, an immediate uh, transfer of energy from you to them. Uh, because the the hurt of being punched, the humiliation, the shock of it, or the hurt, uh, the pain of being having someone you love or you attacked personally, saying you look retarded or something, for no reason now, for no reason, releases a burst of energy and emotional energy from a depletion from you, that's immediately picked up on by the bully. So the bully walks, you know, Nelson and the Simpsons, ah, now uh, the bully walks away. When a bu what, what a school bully is doing is procuring energy, procuring energy. And they get a rush or a thrill from, you know, bullying a, a kid they can bully. Now, uh, this is, uh, this is from a very early age, you know that this is wrong because, and you, you know that this is an, this is a, an unethical thing to do but the bully can't help it the bully it's the only way way it knows it's still alive is to do that and the, when i say bullying it also includes these women who torture their ex-husbands and stuff like that constantly drag them through the court make false accusations against them they're bullies as well in a different way now but the the bully in school You'd all know the same story. What happened to them when they grow up? Nothing. They all seem to vanish. A lot of them die when they're young. A lot of them get this, you know, cancers or have terrible accidents. And they're they're not. I remember one in my school was like that, and he he ended up getting electrocuted by a pylon trying to show off. Uh, and that would have been not because of the, the foolhardiness of the pylon. It's because uh, what I'll talk about later. He would have lost his grip or something because his own nervous system becomes depleted because of, of a false procurement of psychic energy from someone else you know you can call it psychic energy the chinese call it chi and uh, the hindus call it prana but it's all the same thing it's a psychic life force that's in you when you put a sperm and an egg under an electron microscope you will actually see a flash of light the moment that uh, conception happens that's the that's the beginning of your chi or prana or psychic essence now so when people cursing someone so people think in the old days, you know, or when you grow up, you know, so when a bully does that to the kid, walks up to the kid and says, eh, you know, you look like a retard. You look like, you know, this kind of thing. You look like there's something wrong with you and then they all laugh at you. That's a curse. That's exactly, you know, you don't have to, you know, people think that, and the, what happens to the bully is that curse will rebound on them uh, because it was, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll explain it, it's a bit more complicated later on. So, a course doesn't have to be bubble, bubble, boil and trouble. You know, I have newt and all, and bell, book and candle and all this ritual stuff. It doesn't have to be any of that. 
in the post chaos magic age, the nineteen seventies on particularly, a curse can be issued in the form of, and the old days it was done in the form of a satire. It was done in the form of a, um, you know, a, a, a funny song making fun of someone, like the bards and that kind of thing. In the post-chaos magic age, 77 on, and technology has changed the nature of the human nervous system and its interaction with technology. The So you could have a situation where, I'll give you a classic example. Of, now, what's how do courses rebound? Okay, let's talk about what a course is. A course is that you want to damage or hurt somebody for some reason. The only reason... You, the only justifiable reason you have to curse somebody is if they personally, by absolute intention and name, went out to hurt you or damage you for no reason at all. You had no previous malice with them. You had no attack. You never went after them. You never slagged them off. All right. You didn't even put them out. I even know them. But they go after you personally with an element of hate. The hate is what charges the nervous system in this individual who's cursing. The, this is what allows them to actually send the curse towards the individual across the prana, chi, psychic energy, whatever you want to call it, the quantum field. But it can only be done if they've personally violated you on purpose and by specifically targeted you by name or by you know, hitting you in the street or something like that. Otherwise, you cannot, and even then, you shouldn't do it because they might have children, and courses go on from intergenerational uh, until the cycle is broken, usually by emigration and people or people changing their names and their identity. And um, so, even then, you shouldn't do it. You know, but. That's how, that's, if you want to curse someone, that's the only justification you have for it. They set out to do you harm maliciously, on purpose, without provocation. That's the rules of magical engagement. So, in a post-chaos magic age, and you don't have to actually do it that way. A tabloid journalist who has a dislike for a celebrity... Or an individual has no, more specifically, an individual has no real power in the world. Saucy vicar, you know, runs off at housekeeper, pervert on the pulpit. You know, the old trout, the old, uh, you know, you can have a situation where a, a priest fell in love with his housekeeper. And he left the priesthood and ran off with her. And you'll have some, you'll have some tabloid journalist and he'll write an article and put the headline in the paper. Pervert on the pulpit. Saucy, saucy priest shacks up with Randy Housekeeper. And that article is designed no other means than to hurt out those people. Yeah, They could be in love. The priest could have fallen in love with the woman and the woman fallen in love with him. But it's reduced to it, the pervert on the pulpit and his picture on the cover. That's a curse. That's a curse. This is why tabloid journalists tend to all die of cancer or addictions issues before they're 50 or 60. Uh, because they have basically spent their lives hexing and cursing people. And many mainstream journalists as well. If you're a mainstream journalist and you do a hit piece on someone who doesn't deserve it. You know, you know when I say don't deserve it, if they kill someone, if they're Moira Henley, they deserve it. If they're Fred West, if they're someone like that, they deserve it. If you've done a hateful hit piece on an individual based on philosophical differences, you have hexed them because you have hexed them directly. Now, they've done no harm on you and you've directly, especially if your name appears on the article, you're fucked, okay? Yeah, well, this is why all these tabloid journalists, as I said, they all get cancer or heart conditions or they die of addictions before they're 60. And often have terrible private lives and, ter and live miserable existences. And uh, once the, the initial rush, because they're, 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 you know, they're print copy bullies. You know, they're bullies who use the newspapers and the media. Something that's increasingly, has increased more and more in recent times. So, same goes, in the, now we live in the age of the internet. 
if you take part in a smear campaign or, or start a smear campaign against someone that did no personal harm on you, never set out to hurt you, never set out with any malicious intention towards you personally, of course it will come back. It'll bounce back. Why does it bounce back? Uh, because there has to be kind of a, a, a male and female aspect to it. If the if they set out if they set out to hurt you maliciously, a kind of a quantum hook takes place, right? So when you hex them, it grabs into it like that and holds onto it, right? And you have a quantum entanglement with their their psychic energy, chi prana, and the course is working because of that. If they've meant you no harm, there's no there's no psychic lock develops. They come in with their cloak, their hawk, when they try to curse you for no reason. It comes in like this, it grabs it, pulls away. Make a grip, because there was no justification for them. There was no justification for the curse. So, it has to be personal, it has to be malicious, and it has to be without provocation. Someone ghosting you, someone getting sick of you, someone annoyed at you, someone having nothing to do with you anymore is not a curse. They just moved on with their life, okay? That's in your mind, that's a curse. But then with it, they've just moved on in their lives, okay? So, that's why all these wicked women are all on bits, because they get, they're all hexing their exes. And, then, and there was no justification for it. So, so the curse is, it comes back. Now, I want to talk in two specific cases. One is Kathy Griffith, the American comedian and the other is a woman here in Ireland who got Enoch Burke locked up in prison and boasted about it in Twitter now the taxonomy of these two cases and individuals are very similar uh, basically they're, you're damned from that moment on now well there's a certain kind of procedural effect that happens so we'll talk about Kathy Griffith first Kathy Griffith, if you've seen her lately, she's literally on death's door. She had a successful career as a stand-up comic and was, you know, doing great, making lots of money. And then when Trump got elected, she posed for a photograph of her holding Trump's decapitated head while she was holding an axe. That's, of course, that's, that's, that's the same thing as setting out a, a spell. The same thing. Trump had never done her any harm personally, didn't have anything against her, uh, but she had so much hatred for him with, this, with the you know, classic of the Trump derangement syndrome types that she posed for that photograph. When Trump saw it, he made a statement that was almost like very profound, but a way of magical protection. Take note, my friends. Trump said, that, and it's true, that his son Baron had seen that photograph and it made him very upset to see his father's head chopped off in Kathy Griffith's hand. At that moment, the curse that she had sent out had spun around and flew instantly back at her. She initially apologized for it. Okay. She initially apologized for what for the for the photo session. And that might have helped her. Especially if Trump kind of came forward at one point down the road and said, I, you know, well, it, it was a stupid thing she did, but I don't have any malice against her. So, the initial regret is a common thing. When someone, so, when someone curses someone and is done out of a kind of a hatred, followed by, you go girl, bravado, by... Uh, uh, these uh, plebs around them, these uh, NPCs around them. They get an initial rush of, yeah, look at me, I'm cool. I, But then when it suddenly flips over, there's an instant moment of regret. And she did that. She apologized because she thought that the world was going to rally around her and she'd be a hero. This is very common with people who hex, people, who hex others. And... She begins to deteriorate, I mean, almost immediately. So, what? Why is this? Well, what happens is, when the hex is, the, the you know the unwarranted hex goes out, uh, the nervous system is like an open pipe. It's like a leaky pipe, 
and the prana chi, psychic energy, your nervous system, quantum, and it, you know, life force, whatever you call it, starts leaking out. It's a hole that can't, a hole that can't be plugged, unplugged up. And it leaks out, depending on the severity of the course, it leaks out very fast and very slow. And, the, and that initial regret that they've put out there is immediately thinking, well, this wasn't supposed to feel like this. What's going on? There's another kind of flight or, a fight or flight thing. So, the first aspect of it is the initial kind of regret. They will do it. It didn't work out as great as they did. They thought it would. And they would say, oh, I shouldn't have done that. It was an immature thing I did. I'm sorry. They panic. Or they say, oh, in the spirit of it all, you know, let's, let's, you know, it, it's over now. Let's, let's, you know, let, you know, let's have peace. You know, I hope you've learned. This is the, this is the initial panic from the nervous system beginning to bleed. The psychic energy beginning to drain. It didn't work out. They didn't become the hero they thought they were going to be. Because what happens at these types, they become deluded and they think, when I do this, and they're also encouraged by a kind of a, a, a flesh demonic type uh, or types around them go, yeah, do it. You do it. You go, girl. You go, girl. You go for it. You do it. Yeah, yeah, hex him. Hex him. You know, take him down. Yeah, yeah, do, you do it. You do it. And suddenly when they do it, they turn around and these people are like, they're not so encouraging anymore. And then that's when the the psychic energy is fouled in their body starts leaving. So symbols of the first thing is that initial regret. It's either expressed through, <coughs> I'm sorry, or a kind of attempt to make up, you know, a kind of a, you know, in something to do with like, you know, a peaceful resolution, you know, that kind of thing. And, um, and so on. Now, the second stage, then, it's, then it starts becoming kind of a manifesto thing. If the first thing they notice is that food doesn't have the taste that it used to have. And they find that a lot of the foods they eat feel bland. So they start changing their diet in order to try and make, you know, bring some kind of power back to their taste buds and the enjoyment of food. You see, this is why the whole concept of the Epicureans and spiritual contentment are all interlinked. You know, the Fertile Crescent, it's all through history. That sort of spiritualism and enjoyment of, like, the good life, the Epicurean thing, and paganism is very strong, and in, in Hinduism as well. So they start eating things that are h h junk foodie. Things like uh, they're having sugary cereals uh, for dinner. Uh, things like ice cream at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, very salty fast foods. Chinese food particularly is very salty, soy saucy, that kind of thing. Uh, they're desperately trying to uh, restore their nervous system at any cost. Uh, they, the food doesn't taste have the same satisfaction. So they go with increasingly sugary and... Uh, Aaron. Increasingly sugary and uh, salty foods, but generally it's sugary. It, it's like do you ever see that movie Monsters Ball? Uh, the fat Billy Bay, Billy Ray Billy Bob Thornton played a guy who basically bullied his own son into killing himself, and that's why he was up at four o'clock in the morning eating ch double chocolate ice cream, uh, because the taste and sensations were gone. Sometimes it leads to alcohol. Sometimes it doesn't. Okay. Marijuana is a common one. So the, that's the first sign that the taste buds are gone. Another sign is that they drop things, things fall, that they don't have the same uh, kinetic energy they used to have. They go to reach a door handle and then they miss it. They're carrying a tray of food in from the kitchen and it falls out of their hands. They're tripping more easily, this kind of thing. They're becoming absent minded. They drive through red lights. You know, not on purpose, they don't stop thinking about it. They have generally constant accidents, uh, befuddled, uh, you know, what do they call it when you have like, you know, rubber fingers, whatever, rubber finger, everything like that. 
their sleep cycles go into bonkers. Uh, the sleep cycles are really, they're very difficult to go all over the place. Now, because of this, this the lack of sleep and this and the, the the constant things going wrong, plus the, the the decreasing ability to enjoy the good things in life, paranoia sets in. So they think that everything is out to get them. Like they think, like the person they course is now attacking them. Uh, they could be in a supermarket and him bending over, and a can could roll off the top shelf and hit them on the head or hit them on the shoulder, just miss them. And they won't think it was just like it lost, you know, the can wasn't put up there properly and fell. They're now being, you know, the person that they hex is now trying to get them back. This paranoia then leads to lack of sleep. And then what does lack of sleep like always lead to? Psychosis. Now, when the psychosis kicks in, it's usually accompanied by l loss of hair. A very common one. Or head shaving psychosis that you get. You know, borderline women shave their heads and when they go through states of psychosis. Uh, women will often pluck their eyebrows too tightly. Or, you know, things like that. They kind of like, they, they'll suddenly see them wearing makeup and it's too much of it. Uh, there's, there's like this kind of thing, you know. In a man, his fingernails will be beaten, eaten down to nothing. But, um... Uh, the eyes start to bug. Now, this I don't, I can't explain that one, but I've noticed that. And I, I went to a Wiccan event once, and their eyes tended to be bugging, on top of all their physical disabilities. What that comes from, I don't know. And Kathy Griffith's eyes start to bug initially, but then they start closing like this. It's almost that has something. It's almost like the the norepinephrine in the lower brainstem is. You see, magic and science the same thing. The norepinephrine in the lower brain span is firing up all these hormonal interfaces and they're causing the optic nerves at the back of the, the stem the stem stem. I mean, your optic nerves go from here to there. This is where they're charged. And so they go the eyes kind of bug, kind of buggy eyes, you know, like this kind of thing a lot. And they have a deer a deer caught in the headlights thing. Because they're in a state of bewilderment and confusion and confusion. So when the psychosis kicks in head shaving, cutting off eyebrows, inappropriate tattoos, or that kind of thing. Their pets then, it's one of the, this is one of the, one of the tragic parts of it, is their pets suddenly die. It's awful. It's, it's an awful thing. And that's why another reason you should never curse somebody, because their innocent pets can die. Uh, they come home and they find all the fish in their aquarium dead. You know, or this, or, and then, but the main, the main thing of, and then the main thing on top of that, that I really have noticed at this point is, is that everyone in their social circle begins to abandon them. They thought that they were going to be some kind of champion who would initiate initialize this movement of enablers, champions, compadri compa compatriots and all this all around them. That would say, you're just wonderful. That picture you did of Trump was magnificent. You'll always be a legend and you're right to do it. Instead, phone calls don't get answered. People that they were close to start drifting away, making excuses why they can't go to dinner with them. Why? Because the nervous systems of the individuals that once were close to them have become aware there's something wrong with this individual. And they become quite literally cursed. So they stay away from them. Uh, you know, I used to like hanging out with her, but I don't like it now. She, she, she kind of, I don't know, it's just not the same. I just don't feel right about them. They won't say it to the person directly, but that's what I'll say to others. The final stages are cancer and uh, infections that never clear up. So, and then death, of course. So it's, it's a death sentence. So it's only a matter of time before Cathy Griffith will die. Compounded by the fact, unless she makes a total atonement for this, her soul is also damned. This is the other aspect of it. It's a double death. It's the death of the physical body, but the death of the, the soul too. It dissipates upon the tenth gate of the ether. They use like esoteric language. It just dissipates into the psychic form. And that's the end of them. 
and it's an awful thing to go through. So that's Catholic. See, this is why you know Kathy Griffith is doomed and damned, and you just follow her, her deterioration. She's doomed. And it's over. Rap the rapid aging. It's all there. The loss of hair, the loss of vitality, the eyes bugging, and then eventually going like this, and squinting because they don't even have the psychic energy to hold their eyelids open. Uh, after uh, after the, it's the depletion of norepinephrine in the lower brain stand is very similar to uh, the the depletion of serotonin and melatonin among you know, like heavy ecstasy users back in the nineties. You've only got so much you're born all out and it doesn't work anymore. Although they still feel that sense of anxiety all the time, a constant undercurrent of anxiety that they think that they can cure by double downing double doubling down on the attack. Doubling down on the smear campaign, doubling down on the hex, doubling down on the curse, you know, doubling down on the hit piece in the media. But no, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't undo it. It doesn't make it worse. It doesn't, just doesn't, it, you're, you're damned. They're damned anyway. So, which now, so you, I told you about how a, a hex rebounds and I gave you the case of Kathy Griffith, Griffith in America. Now we're coming right around here to Ireland. Burke. The other day, a woman who claims to be uh, disturbed and frightened uh, by Enoch Burke's protest outside the school, where he continues to stand defending his right to not believe in transgender among children, and that chromosomes exist. A prof uh, what was she was that she's a Polish immigrant to Ireland. I won't I won't even name her because she's so damned. I won't even name her, but because uh, that could even be dangerous. But she's a professional victim. You know these professional victim types, feminist, left wing, Polish immigrant. See, she was probably trying to chase out of Poland for being the same piece of shit that she was. She's here, but she has a disabled child, and she's using she uses a disabled child as a a kind of a thing. You, it's like it's like Greta Thunberg's autism. How dare you how dare you question climate change policy? Greta Thunberg is autistic. Well, how dare you 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 say anything bad about this woman's activism? She's a disabled child. I have friends who have severely disabled children, including a close friend who has whose adult daughter now has Angel Man syndrome, an awful condition. And she doesn't go around being a professional victim. I have a friend in Wales. His daughter is also has a similar as as has a disability to do cognition. And he takes care of her, and he doesn't go around being a professional victim. But there's types that she uses. This it's a kind of a Munchausen by proxy. It's very similar to the mothers who transition their young boys. The attentions unlike, but they use it as part of their activism. So she, she between her and this other har, har, harpy, they got an article in an Irish paper attacking. Enoch Burke. Now Enoch Burke was arrested for being outside the school that he's banned from for no reason that, other than he wanted to be a teacher. That's it. And he's been put in Mountjoy, he's been put in prison in I think Mountjoy in Dublin. She posted on her, when this was announced, she posted on her wall, yes! Bam, she was gone. There was no great rally around her saying, you are a hero for getting Enoch Burke locked up. There just wasn't there. Okay, what happens now? The instant regret. And then she goes, well, prison is not the best place for him. And maybe, you know, she was kind of implied that he was mentally ill, which all, you know, generally that's, was gas, she was gaslighting then. You know, you'd always get the gaslight. When the, when it blows up in her face, they try to make it that the person that they attacked was mentally ill. Uh, this is the gas. This is the gas. They try to use gas. Gaslighting is the initial thing, along with regret, that they try to use to protect themselves. Because the initial thing of they thought they were going to be a, carried through the streets of Ireland, on a throne for being the one who took down Enoch Burke, it doesn't happen. And there is the phone isn't ringing with congratulations. So there's an instant. There's an instant element of regret. Now that instant element of regret. Then is manifested by oh I don't think he should go to prison, because it, but if, but meanwhile if people have thousands of people has posted you go girls you would have said oh I'm glad he's locked up. So other than a handful and I mean that a handful of gimps, 
who, you know, the, he's a head case, he stands outside of school every day, or, you know, the, the kind of animals with the, the Palestinian flag on their profile picture alongside the rainbow flag, you know, you know, anti-Irish jihadists, um, agree, saying, well done, there was very few, it was a wall of silence, apart from other people going, you got a man who just wants to teach us to do his job sent to prison. There was lots of that. Or things like, you know, you're not living in a communist country anymore. Who the hell do you think are coming to Ireland and telling a man, getting a man locked up for his convictions to believe that there are such things as chromosomes? Now, she, the same fate that awaited Kathy Griffith and now, now awaits her. And that's, that's all I have to say. Uh, it's a terrible thing she did, especially it's tragic. She's a disabled child. Who's going to take out care of her disabled child as she deteriorates? A la Kathy Griffith. That was a course when you go into an, and and then it also hit the the, the the person who wrote the article with her. She'll probably get cancer or something like that. Or suddenly find she's replaced by an AI robot, like so many of them in the media will be, because they can't think for themselves. And they're just there to go. Like in Ireland, the purpose of every single mainstream journalist is to wake up in the morning and go, yeah, government, we love our government. We love our politicians and everything they do. So keep an eye on that woman. Keep an eye on her and you will see the same effects that happened with Cathy Griffith will happen with her. They've already started the initial regret, trying to make amends somehow by saying, you know, well, let's put it all behind us, or I hope he, does, he doesn't really belong in prison, he belongs in a psychiatric hospital, gaslighting, you know, and so on. All I can say is, look at the people over the years who've attacked me for no reason, smear campaigns. And it's it's not pretty, the end result. I never did anything personally on them, they came after me. So, you know, they just decided they had a dislike of me or were pissed off that I didn't want anything to do with them anymore or had moved on in my life. It's not pretty. And this way you should never, you know, hatred is a terrible thing. You know, it's like Steve Hughes, what he says, if you're going to hate somebody, hate positively. <laughs> Make sure you have a fucking reason to. And that they did something very personal to you. Very personal. And this is why we live in an age where, you know, the world is falling apart because... Things like social media have made it so easy for so many people to hex others who didn't deserve it. And then they're wondering why, you know, their lives are falling apart. Your job as a human being on this planet is to have stewardship over your psychic energy. And you don't gain stewardship over your psychic energy uh, by trying to steal it from someone else any more than you don't get health healthy yourself uh, by breaking the legs of someone who's very healthy and runs every day it's as simple as that and so you watch out for that stuff now i know there's some people say he's talking about magic and all this bollocks and all this stuff it's real magic is a real force in the world it's a real thing it's a it can be scientifically explained it has been in in in, in universities that things like pre prana and chi and all this now when i say uh, one more final proviso. If you think to yourself, this is like the rest of you don't get paranoid. If you mention private, in a private conversation to somebody, uh, I don't like that fucker. I don't like him at all. He did something that put me right off. And the other person goes, oh really, what was that? Once that's a private conversation, even private on the internet, or private talking amongst each other, that's not a curse. It's only when it enters the public domain, okay? the public domain that they say it in a public forum like on social media to the world or to people who don't know about it or they announce it in the street or they put it on the newspaper headline that's when it's a curse when it's said in private like Tina's new video Silence is Golden when it's said in private it has no damaging effect on you or the individual hear, hearing it or maybe even agreeing with it it's when it goes public that the damage is unleashed. And public displays of these of these hatreds and smear campaigns. Now remember, another thing is retaliation is not the same thing. That's another thing these types often do, is they will initially launch the smear campaign, hit piece, takedown, public attack, 
And then they will try to make out later on that when the other person fights the corner, stands their corner, stands the ground, or fights back, that then they're the victim. You know what I mean? They try to reverse it. That they are the victim of the. In they they try to make out that retaliation was the initial strike, that retaliation was the initial attack. When it wasn't, it was retaliation. Retaliation has no effect on anybody, either the other side or yourself, or who's you know. It's just it's just a natural function. But that's what they often do. They'll often turn around and say, "He attacked me. She attacked me." After they initially attacked him. Retaliation is as is not the same thing. The best thing of all to do is to, you know, try to stay silent and let the truth become evident and work itself out. Uh, you will see there's two ways of telling it, right? Here's the here's how how do you know if a smear campaign, a hit piece, a curse, or a hex was justified? That the person they did it to deteriorated. All the things I just mentioned that happened to Cathy Griffith and others happened to them. If the reverse happens, they become more popular, they become more loved, they become more successful, they reach bigger audiences, their work becomes more respected. That means the self-hex has happened. And to use the android in Alien movie, after he was hooked back up, the head was hooked back up, those of you who have done that, you have my sympathies, but you're damned. And you know it.